Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on inserting a scatter plot using Microsoft Excel. A scatter plot allows us to examine the relationship between two variables. One is plotted on the y axis and one is plotted on the x axis of a graph. We often use the scatter plot when we are trying to evaluate the correlation between two variables. The scatter plot is also referred to as a scatter chart and a scatter diagram. So I have fictitious data loaded here in an Excel worksheet. I have survey data, an aptitude test, a skill test, and a motivation level. And over here to the right, I've calculated the correlation between the survey scores and the aptitude test just using the C-O-R-R-E-L function, the correlation function in Excel. So as you can see here in cell H3, if I move into the formula bar, survey, all the data in survey is selected and all the data in aptitude test. Those are the two ranges used in the correlation function. And similarly, correlation between survey and the skill test results and the correlation between survey and motivation. I've also used the stdev.s function, the sample standard deviation, to calculate the standard deviation of each variable, the survey, aptitude test, skill test, and motivation variable. Graphing these data on a scatter plot is fairly straightforward. I'm going to start by selecting the survey variable including the label. Select all these values and then I'm also going to select all the values in the aptitude test variable again including the label. I'm going to go to insert and then under charts you see it's insert scatter XY or bubble chart. This is the option I want. Click the down arrow there and I'm going to select scatter. You can see we move into the design tab of the chart tools and to make this a little easier to see I'm going to make the background black and note that the title of this chart is aptitude test. So the y-axis here represents the scores in the aptitude test and the x-axis represents the scores from the survey. So you can see from the way these points are spread out on the scatter plot, that there doesn't appear to be a strong relationship between the survey scores and the aptitude test scores. Over here on the ribbon, all the way to the left, we can add a chart element. In this case, we want to add a trend line, and it's going to be linear, a linear trend line. And you can see the line that Excel adds in is just about flat. We can see the equation for this line if we double click on it. We can see there's options that open here to the right and there is an option here we can check off display equation on chart. So I'm going to click that option and I'm also going to display the R squared. That's the correlation value R squared which we also call the coefficient of determination. Close that dialog and move back to the scatter plot and with the way these dots are plotted, it's sometimes hard to see the equation and the r-squared value. So in this case I'm just going to move it to the top right. So the line, of course, is a straight line, so it follows the y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. It's where this line intercepts the y-axis. So we can see the slope is fairly small. 0.06. The intercept in this case is 46 and the R squared value, the coefficient of determination, is 0 0.0002. So here we would say there's really no relationship between these two variables. To see the relationship between survey and the next variable, skill test, we don't have to insert a new chart, a new scatter plot. We can use the one we have. If we click into the grid here, we can just 
drag the selection from aptitude test. You can see that's surrounded there by a blue line. We can just pull that over to skill test. And now we're comparing survey and skill test. Again, skill test is plotted on the y-axis. And you can see this looks a bit different than the relationship between survey and aptitude test. Here, the line moves from the bottom left to the top right. You can see the slope here, 0.93. And none of the points are particularly far from the line. They're not scattered all around the chart. They're fairly concentrated around this line. So it doesn't surprise us that this represents a high R2 value, 0.83 or 83 percent. So what this tells us is that 83 percent of the variance in one variable can be explained by movement in the other variable. So this is a strong positive association. As one score goes up, the other score goes up quite a bit. So with this line moving from the bottom left to the top right, this tells us we have a positive correlation. As one variable increases, the other variable increases as well. If the line were moving from the top left to the bottom right, that would be a negative association. As one variable increases, the other variable decreases. But whether an association is positive or negative is unrelated to the strength of the relationship. And I'll show that in this last example with this motivation variable. Again, I'm just going to drag the selection over one column. And you can see this was set up to be a perfect negative relationship. So the correlation is negative 1. The coefficient of termination is 1. And of course, it would also be 1 if this were a perfect positive relationship. 100% of the variance in one variable can be explained by movement in the other. It doesn't matter that the direction here, the direction of the association is negative versus positive. Also notice with a perfect correlation, again, whether it's positive or negative, that all the points are exactly on the line. There's no deviation from this line as we saw with the skill test and with the aptitude test. I hope you found this video on creating a scatter plot in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.